Speaking of Fred, he was on a, a thing we did over the summer, summer school. Mehmet felt that Rasan and Gary were aggressively complimenting Fred. I loved that, by the way. Here's the thing. So I heard I was going to be invited as a guest on summer school. So I was like, oh, let me listen to see how this sounds. I want to hear what. And, and the questions they asked Fred were literally like, why are you so great? When did you realize you're so great? How does it feel to be so great? You had your ass smooched for like 40 minutes. You well, didn't I'm really... not responsible for the ass kissing, Mehmet. Well, you took it, though. You did accept it. And oh, what am I supposed to it? say? You guys are wrong. You guys are assholes. Well, I mean, all right, that, let's, let's someone's go. complimenting you. You say thank you. This is Mamet uh, claiming that Fred got one big blowjob on the air. Your batting percentage is like as high as it could be. It's like point nine 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 nine. Listening to you talk about the drops right now, to me, it sounds a lot like LeBron James or Magic Johnson. You're using your court vision to just guide you as the show goes along. It really does require that type of focus and commitment. Why didn't you go to like a good school on a scholarship like it just seems like you're smart fred is a genius are you humble it really is more of a matter of uh, a discipline you're so humble fred what's the best thing about fame the best part about it is when people are nice to you if they say something to you it's like oh man uh fred i love you you're a gentleman and fred is the one who came up with the idea that i should enter to the tarantella and by the way fred my family loved it uh, so the, the part i was really screaming at my radio was when Rasan is comparing him to LeBron James, and Fred doesn't go, that's insane. He's like, yeah, you're right. It's, it's I, the exact I same mindset really and thought discipline. He was, uh, that was crazy. I really thought he was fucking with me, but then no. I saw he was serious, and I wasn't going to goof on him. Then I get on the show, and it's like, immediately, it's like, why do people hate you so much? Why do you suck? <laughs> uh, how long have you sucked for? And I was yeah. just like, what the fuck is this? I thought we were like but, all going to go on there and get our you know ass kissed. You know that's not what happened. That, you know we... We had you on. You're immediately oh, out of the box. callers that say you No, you suck. started the show combative. The I said, second I, said, I walked in the studio before we even started filming, they're like tearing apart my outfit, saying I look like shit. It was insane. I mean, how am I supposed to perform under conditions like that? There's a montage of Mamet putting everyone on staff down on summer school. <laughs> But, how would okay. I describe you, Mamet? I would say you are... Beloved, a I, fan favorite. I, I, Everyone but me is perfectly content to go on the air and just ramble on inanely and be boring. <laughs> I do stand above the rest in a lot of different ways. <laughs> What's bold is that I actually try to comb my hair and iron my clothes, and around this office, yeah, everyone looks like a slob. <laughs> if I was a listener and I saw me on the street, I would be like, oh my God, okay. you're fantastic. Well, I don't ever want to cause the radio show to suck or be bad and i feel like a lot of people around here don't think like that sometimes and it shows i really do kind of look at myself as like a van gogh figure on the show i do think i've made great contributions to the show and i'm always shocked when i don't come up when people are naming like the best people on the show no one ever compliments me Listen, you can slice moments <laughs> together and make some money <laughs> off anyway. You mean like the ones you sliced together of us kissing Fred's ass like that? But that is true. <laughs> the, the, the context, the context uh. of, of those clips, you have to understand. Again, I thought I was walking in there thinking I was going to be getting my ass kissed. I was in the fight for my life with those questions. I mean, I, I was really you, having to like defend myself as a person who exists my in man. this world. I agree with the comment you made. You are like Van Gogh because right now you're making me want to cut my ears off. Both of them. <laughs> and I, uh, my, my point but, was not but, to say I'm a great artist. My point is to say I'm underappreciated, which I think. Okay. Listen, I love you. I don't have anything against you. In fact, my met did a really no, nice likewise. job. I gave him the assignment that Gary had something called a vinyl party, and he starts telling stories about vinyl. <laughs> Things got so bad at this vinyl party that Gary kept having to shush the audience because they were interrupting and not listening. <laughs> As I said, the only thing I ask, enjoy the music, but just when we call somebody up and we're introducing them and they're telling their story, just give them your attention for those couple of minutes. Shh. I want to bring up our next presenter. Okay, can I get your attention again? Shh. Just we're going to bring our... We're, we're, we're moving very quickly, so don't worry. Thank you uh, for your attention. Hello, hello. All right, shh. We're back. We're rolling. We're doing good. All right, thank you. Shh. All right, hello, hello. If I can have your attention. Hello, hello. Thank you, thank you. We're getting towards the end of the party, so if you could just give me your patience for a couple more people, I'd greatly appreciate it. Shh, 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 shh. Shh, shut up. I need to bore you some more. Shh, shh, shh. But, but Howard, how, this was, you know, people showed up voluntarily. 
<laughs> hoping to have a good time. And Shh. Gary says, stop Shh. it. Stop having a good time and listen to me, <laughs> the person who's boring you. And he's shushing John Stamos and Molly Shannon. I mean, you know, these are people who are not used to being shushed. And when Gary shushes, you know, because of the lips and teeth configuration, you get a lot of spray coming out. So the audience right. did not it's appreciate it. It's like a, a weather <laughs> it's a a tsunami system moving spray. through. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I spent like four or five days with Gary while I was in L.A. to cover this. And I put together a top five list of my top five Gary observations while I was in L.A. <laughs> Number five, I wrote it down. Gary dresses like a cartoon character. And then when I say that, I mean he wears the same outfit over and over and over again. This is like, that's wow. like from one week on his Instagram. And I did not plan this. I didn't tell him wear this shirt and he shows up today in the shirt. He just really wow. likes this shirt well, and wears it over really and over, over again. One of them is black, it, one of them is blue. All right, what's the fourth thing you noticed? Gary has to carry an ID card in his wallet to let TSA agents know that he has titanium knees. I just thought that was interesting. I never knew that before. <laughs> that my, doc funny. my doctor gave it to me if I ever get stopped. Do you have it? No, I carry it in my bag. What's number three? Gary has one very calloused elbow. The other is mysteriously smooth. I don't know if it's because he sits like this. So that elbow. Wow. And the other is smooth. Oh, that's so wow. funny. I, you know, my wife's always talking about my, I think I lean, when I'm doing the show or when I'm at my desk, I think I lean on one more than the other. That's true. Number two, Gary, he's chronically late. The whole week we were in LA, he was late to summer school. He was late to the really? shuttle at the hotel. I, oh I, my God. And he's never in a rush. Like he's just kind of no. doing this like here's casual what, here's what walk happened. in his sunglasses. I, I was I'm like, Gary, we gotta go. I was late one day. I completely had the time. One day and then the next day and the next no, day. No, just one time. The number one thing, and you probably know this already, but I have a very specific story that I happen to witness myself. Gary has no boundaries when it comes to other people's food. So when this party was happening we were told by planners hey listen this party they're gonna have like endless drinks and delicious hors d'oeuvres and delicious cookies and you the workers are to have absolutely none of it that is for gary <laughs> and his guests only we're gonna oh, provide God. you some lunch in like a separate closet room so it's like okay that's fine gary is the talent and the celebrities are the talent and they get the good food so then i'm like in the workers closet where the workers food is and i was just shocked who is the first person in line for that food but gary <laughs> okay. i was just like well oh gary you God. have to order hors and your cookies and things okay. like that so there's well, a well, dividing line hold here on, hold on, hold on. they're not allowed to cross give me a your second. line Stop. give me a second did i eat the last two slices of pizza or were there 10 boxes left over you were first in line. I didn't see I how much was left. I mean, could I, could I well, hold you? Uh, and then the worst part is, he's so crazy. like the workers are starving that night. And he's Gary, is, he's full from pizza, you know, because he's eating their food. And he's got like delicious cookies. He's like in their face, like taking a nibble, kind of like waving it around <laughs> as he's talking. <laughs> and then he like he's sets right. it on a counter. We were told like, you'll be fired yeah. if you touch a cookie. I didn't and know, that, just, I didn't know they were told that. Wrong. You know, him and I used to have a very contentious thing. And I do feel like I consider him a friend now. I feel like we're close. I'm like, God, I, I've worked so hard to repair this relationship. And then they send me on this final party. And, and I have no choice but to tell you what happened and how it went. 